What's up, apes? Welcome back to the Peels video stream of the day here. Of course, my name is David here to bring you all the action from the ticker team here this beautiful Wednesday. It is currently April 24th and it is 8.30 p.m. on the dot here. So coming at you live, trying to get you all psyched up and ready for tomorrow's tape because we got even more S&P 500 market cap reporting earnings here tomorrow, or I guess today when you're going to be watching this. But either way, be on the lookout for names like uh, Google, I think, and we have Microsoft tomorrow. So we got a whole lot of fun stuff going on. We did have some great ones today. We'll be talking about Meta and their kind of earnings price reaction, what we expect going forward. Absolute piece of shit. So definitely stay tuned for that at the very end. Before that, of course, we will be diving into some of the stock movies of the day, talking about how right we are on some of these things and how potentially wrong we might be on some other things. So if you like bullying us or making money alongside us, make sure to stay tuned for that as well. But of course, we'll kickstart with the boring shit, manufacturing, whatever other nonsense is going on. Uh, but, you know, I do have to apologize. I owe you guys an apology. I didn't have a video yesterday. Uh, you know, it was a busy night for me. I had a big softball game that I had to play in. No big deal. Pitcher, we won the game. That never happens. We are officially now 1-11 and 11 on the season, I think. So it was a big night for the fellas. We went out and grabbed some beers afterwards. And I came back home. Dog was freaking out. Everybody was freaking out. So it was a rough night over here at the Daily Peel Global headquarters. But nonetheless, we are back and we are more back than ever here today. So let's go ahead and dive right into things. First and foremost, you know, relatively solid day for the Alpha portfolio. And when I say relatively, I mean in comparison to the S&P and the NASDAQ indices. So the S&P 500 basically didn't move at all yesterday. It was up about two basis points. The NASDAQ was up about 10 basis points. And you know the WSO Alpha portfolio more than double the NASDAQ on the day. Excuse me. Actually, if you double the NASDAQ's return and then add in the S&P 500s, that's what the Alpha portfolio did. And for those of us who didn't pass third grade math, the Alpha portfolio was up about 22 basis points on the day here. So that brings us to about 7.46% fully for the year. Still outperforming both the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ now. So no big deal. Right back on top where we belong. We knew it wouldn't be too long. The NASDAQ was getting very lucky out there. But when Meta is down, you know, what is it, 17% now after hours? It's not too difficult to outperform in that case. But still, shout out to the apes over there. Some banana bits of the day. So first and foremost, we did link to a story about Meta, even though we covered it down below. This one was more so talking about how Meta is now absolutely dumping piles of cash it barely has into artificial intelligence investment, kind of pivoting it away from dumping cash that they don't have into virtual reality shit. So they are going fully into AI. Investors are a little bit nervous about it, but maybe this one will actually work out very much unlike the... Uh, Oculus or the Quest or whatever the fuck it's called, to be honest. Remember, I put one of those things on. My little brother is one of the biggest gamers I have ever met, or at least he was growing up. And he got an Oculus when we were, well, he's six years younger than me. So he was probably like 11, 12, 13 at the time. I don't really know. I don't pay much attention to it, to be quite honest. And I remember he played it for like a week. It was all he did, but then never once picked it up again, basically. I put it on once. I played that Beat Saber game. It was pretty fun, but I felt seasick after about two seconds. So, you know, maybe it's just not meant for me. But either way, if you buy the Oculus or really any one of those headsets, just understand you're buying the best birth control on the market. So could be a good decision for your future in that case. Anyway, IBM, they're throwing $6.4 billion to cloud provider HashiCorp purchasing this company on the same day that it missed bigly, to quote Donald Trump, on their earnings report. So tough look for IBM after hours, but hopefully this acquisition can kind of turn, cause investors to kind of look the other way from the miserable, disgusting earnings that they had in Q1. Anyway, McKinsey is also coming under fire about damn time for literally causing the opioid crisis in the United States. We know that the what's-their-name family, those horrific people who kind of Push that shit. What the hell is it called? I probably should have looked it up before we got started here. But go watch the movie Dope Sick or the series Dope Sick on Hulu if you don't know what I'm talking about. McKinsey was heavily involved in kind of advising on exactly how to do so. Uh, and so now they're finally coming under legal fire, getting sued, getting, you know, all these different kinds of allegations. So I'm definitely going to want to check out that story. Finally, the Daily Chart Book, one of our favorite newsletters out there because they actually don't say anything. They're the complete opposite of me. They don't yap at all, which seems... It's a complete anathema to us over here at the Daily Peel Global Headquarters, but that is what they do nonetheless, giving you some great charts out there. And they basically release this analysis. It's not by them, it's by somebody else. They're more of an aggregator. And it says that 
cost push inflation is terrible for stocks, uh, but it's that demand pull inflation that actually can work out for it. Keep in mind, cost push is what we've been talking about for the past couple of years, but we could have been transitioning into a more demand pull inflationary scenario based on kind of back testing and looking at some data over the past couple of months. So definitely going to want to check that out if you want to know what the hell is going on with inflation and the stock market. Anyway, let's get into some of the manufacturing data of the day. We are talking slowing but growing. So in recent years, we all know that artificial intelligence, robotics, and worst of all, the absolute nerd losers who built those kind of stuff has completely taken over mainstream media and really society at large. You know, before we get into a whole new, brave new world or anything else like that kind of thing, shout out to Aldous Huxley, we still have people who are out here making cool shit. I wouldn't know anything to do with that. I have no idea what that's like at all. But some people are still manufacturing things that actually matter in the real economy. So yesterday, we got both the S&P Global PMI of our Purchasing Managers Index for the month, as well as the durable goods orders for the month. Now, these are different months that we're talking about. So durable goods is from March. PMI is somehow from April, even though, let me just double check here. Yeah, it is still April. So I don't know how they counted this for the entire month, but I think that's their way of trying to make up for the ridiculously delayed data that we get with the S&P S &P Case Shiller Home Price Index. So these guys, they're addicted to long names. And effectively, what we're talking about here is uh, the Total Global Flash U.S. Composite Output Index. Yes, that is the actual name. Like I said, they are addicted to extremely long names. That's what we're seeing here. So the PMI did decline for the month, but it is still over 50. So that means we're on expansion territory, but not expanding as much as we were in March at about 50.9. Breaking it down a little bit more, we saw that services declined about 1.5% to 50.9, also right in line with the overall composite index. And meanwhile, the output index this is actual manufacturing of goods, where services is the other bullshit that, you know, like we do here. Uh, that fell 5.7% for the month, so it might sound terrible, but then we keep in mind that services tend to drive about 70-80% to of total US GDP in any given year. So, seeing that they're declining a little bit less, that's a positive sign. Really kind of a boring report. It was, it was hard to even come up with a takeaway from this thing, so that's why we went ahead and took a look at durable goods orders. So, durable goods rose about 2.6% in the month of March. They actually took their time and counted and kind of figured the shit out so that the data would actually matter. Uh, most of that game was largely due to transportation services, however. This is idiots dumb enough to try to buy a Boeing plane right now. I mean, you're effectively purchasing a, a coffin for anywhere between 50 to 300 people or whatever the fuck, however many people can fit on a plane. But either way, transportation services were up 7.7% for the month. When we take that out, we kind of get closer to like a core durable goods order, I guess. I don't know, that's probably bullshit but if we take out transportation services durable goods only actually increased 0.2 percent from february in march so relatively weak month on that front but hey taken in the aggregate it's back-to-back -back months of increases which we haven't seen since the spring of 2023 so you know we're really looking for any way that we can be positive about this but it's a it's particularly hard when we factor in price data as well because this these reports are nominal when they're talking about the total durable goods amount that was ordered and that total increase it is nominal and we did see prices increase at the same time particularly input prices increased output prices didn't increase by as much so i guess manufacturers are out of the kindness of their hearts eating some of that inflation for us i'm sure it's not because they can't pass on cost to consumers anymore but that is the effective state of u.s manufacturing it's good it's expanding not quite as much as we would like it to be but still it is above that 50 level which is really all that matters at the end of the day we're seeing services uh slow by less than goods so again another point in the uh, another point for the good guys on that front now uh yeah, keep in mind, manufacturing does tend to be a leading uh, a leading indicator for the broader U.S. economy in general, too. Basically, if manufacturing is heating up, it's a good sign that businesses are confident that, you know, they're going to be making more money in the future. So we're still over that 50 line, which means we're expanding, which means these businesses must be relatively confident, judging by the purchasing managers index. But you never know. Obviously, this could, you know, could be completely wrong manufacturing. It's as a somewhat strong kind of pro-cyclical correlation, but it's not super strong and it's hardly causal at the same time. So, you know, relatively solid footing. We're not too sad going into Q2 here, or uh, I guess we're, you know, a month into Q2, but going into the latter half of this year, everything looks like it's going to be okay right now, but we'll wait until Friday when we get that PCE report before we make any determinations about what we expect going forward. Now, what we do know is that Tesla is killing it going forward. However, stock was up 12.1% yesterday. They must have heard that the WSO Alpha team dropped a very bullish research report on this stock here. So, 
this was pretty amazing. It's kind of like when you send, you know, like a risky you up text to somebody who's way out of your league and they actually respond and they're like, yeah, come over. That's effectively what happened yesterday. Tesla sent that you up text with their shitty absolute garbage Q1 report and investors said, fuck yeah, we're up. And not only are we up, your stock is up too, which then makes we up again. What I, I'm going to stop right there before my brain breaks. But anyway, Tesla just had their best day in nearly three years yesterday. So Again, it was a very weak report, but still, the company is the company is getting the shareholders to look to the future much more than looking at right now. For the first time in its history, it kind of seems like this is actually a moment where investors are starting to believe Elon and the rest of the team that this is more than just a car company. So we've known its valuation hasn't traded like a car company since fucking 2003 or whenever this thing was founded. But Elon came onto the earnings report yesterday and he was incredibly hype. You can kind of tell by the tone of his voice and especially the words that he was saying. He actually described their future as uh, their future robo taxi service as kind of an Airbnb plus Uber. And when you're saying some shit like that, obviously investors are going to get hyped up. So that helped out shares a lot. Keep in mind, markets are forward looking. So the fact that Tesla is saying like, hey, we're pivoting away from being just a car company got them very excited as well. Go check out our recent research report. We dropped it about a month or so ago. So still hot off the presses, very relevant going forward. Check out that price target. Subscribe to WSO Alpha to not miss any more of our research. Anyway, moving on down below, we have Hasbro. So everybody here, we're very wise apes, very responsible investors. We never gamble degenerately or speculate wildly on anything, right? But one of the things that we know is that stocks are not toys. But it turns out yesterday we learned that toys can be good stocks. And Hasbro proved that for us. They rose about 11.9% on the day on a very solid earnings report. And I say very solid, and I just reminded myself that the company's revenue fell 24.3% annually, but this was somehow still better than what the street was expecting. At the same time, earnings almost doubled expectations at 61 cents a share versus the 27 cents was expected. They, you know, this company has been through the ringer. Really ever since late 2019, and especially post-pandemic, which I guess is basically the same time period at this point, the kids these days, they are turning to iPads much more than they are to like Nerf guns and the other bullshit that Hasbro actually makes. It's an absolute tragedy. I mean, the whole purpose of Nerf is to get the American youth ready for war. And the fact that we're turning to iPads instead, very troubling sign. It's like the kids aren't going to be ready to go fight for their country anymore. But anyway, it was a relatively solid quarter for Hasbro despite that absolutely disgusting fall in revenue. Still, it just goes to show you markets are extremely forward-looking. They barely care at all about what you did. They just care about what direction you're going in. Again, it's not good or bad. It's better or worse when it comes to investing. Keep that in mind. Anyway, let's go ahead and move into some of the more rotten names on the day here. So, First and foremost, we have Enphase Energy. It's like a damn miracle today because this is what our next WSO Alpha Equity Research Report is going to be on. It's coming out this weekend. So if you want to get our thoughts on the renewable energy sector and specifically what price target you should have on Enphase, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. So we're optimistic here. The company was down about 5.6% on the day because when they came out with their earnings report, it was a little bit weaker than expected because the solar industry has been getting absolutely mangled lately. It mangled worse than my hands when I'm trying to play with my dog and it just keeps fucking biting me the entire time. They missed expectations, bull sales and EPS fell for the year, but analyst commentary on the day, you know, a lot of analysts cut their price targets by like one or two dollars. So it wasn't a huge change. And I think that robust kind of perspective from the analysts kept shares from falling completely through the cracks like we'll talk about with the next stock. But uh, NPs, once again, down 5.6%. And effectively, the idea here is that the solar industry is going through it. You know, interest rates completely destroy the industry, and especially with uh, there's a very high cost of energy right now, so it's kind of further incentivized to get into solar if you can. So we kind of have the view that there's going to be a strong recovery in the sector. Enphase is a market leader on a high beta name. So, you know, expecting things to go higher, that's kind of why we're a little bit optimistic. Once again, for the full explanation, go subscribe to fucking WSO Alpha. What else are you doing here? How are you watching this video right now 13 minutes in and you're not subscribed to Alpha? Go do it right now. Anyway, Evercore, that's our final stock on the day. This thing was down about 5% on the day. You know, even Tom Brady, he threw a pick once in a while. Even Michael Jordan, he missed a three-pointer, missed a free throw every once in a while. Personally, I never miss, so I don't know what this is like. But Evercore did miss big in the first quarter on both sales and EPS. That's despite a 143% jump in underwriting fees for the quarter. That was offset by a 7% decline in advisory fees. Ultimately, this amalgamated into a 1.5% decline for total revenue for the year. Uh, they did also miss on the earnings side of things, but 
Uh, it was, you know, by a little bit less on the bottom line. So that's kind of what stemmed the bleeding a little bit there. Clearly, the M&A market, although it's coming back, it's not fully back just yet, or Evercore would absolutely be riding way higher. They're the gold standard in M&A, and I'm sure most of you would uh, cut off your left arm to work for this company. So just know that they're going through it sometimes. If you didn't get the job offer, it's just because they had a bad quarter. It's nothing to do with you, of course. All right, final stock mover, and really the final topic to talk about here today, earning spotlight today it is on meta platforms so we look back through history right and we know that cigarettes are going to kill you but at least you look fucking sick as hell while you smoke them we know that oil isn't great for the environment but nonetheless bp did try to replace the entirety of the gulf of mexico with oil uh, but at least it kind of makes your car go you know like there's some use for it meta on the other hand this is a product that makes you depressed makes you look like a loser while you use it and the only place it's going to make you go is straight to your new therapist's office so we are very happy to see the company completely fall off a cliff here after hours. Let me see what the final tally was after hours as well, because that's also something I didn't look up before hopping on here. Jesus Christ, this is an absolute massacre. So the stock was trading at 493.50 at 4 p.m. here today. Currently trading at way below that, down about 15.1 at 3% after hours. Definitely you're not expecting a pretty open here. So uh, basically, this is the exact opposite of what we saw with Tesla. Tesla came out, they missed on both EPS and revenue, but they had a positive outlook going forward. Stock is off to the races after hours and at the open here today. Meta, complete opposite. They destroyed expectations. They completely killed it in the quarter, but they had a slightly weaker outlook on Q2. It's just wait till you hear the number because it's really no big deal at all, but investors freaked out. And a big part of that reason is because Meta has been killing it lately. The stock's up almost 40% year to date already, up almost 140% uh, in the past year or so as well. So they have been killing it. It's been trading very high and much higher than investors were willing to withstand. When a company runs up like this, any kind of negative news against it is going to have an outsized impact for our talking percentage return. So that's because it's already at a lofty valuation that it probably doesn't deserve to be at. So when there's negative commentary out there or any negative news, it's going to be hurt extra much, like way more than it otherwise would. And that's exactly what we saw with Meta here today. So the company, they reported a 27% jump in revenue. Uh, very solid. Once again, they beat on both fronts on both uh, uh, sales and uh, earnings. A big reason for that as well was the fact that the company, they cut their headcount by about 10%. And overall, they reduced operating expenses, or specifically SG&A, actually, by about 16%. That helped contribute to a more than doubling in net income for the quarter. Meta ultimately saw net income rise about 116.7% compared to the first quarter of last year. So they are absolutely raking it in. A big reason for it is probably because of how hot Zuckerberg looks nowadays. I mean, I might have to send him a fucking... We were talking about you up text. I might have to shoot him one. I'm sure he'd respond. Priscilla would love that. Anyway... Uh, the company, the real bad news came when they said that they expect somewhere between $37.75 billion and $39 billion in total revenue for the year. That puts the, uh, not for the year, for the second quarter, excuse me. That puts the midway mark at about, what, like 30, oh, 37.75, excuse me. That is the lower end of the guidance, but the upper end is $39 billion. So that comes in below what the market was expecting at $38.3 billion in total. Obviously, barely missing at all what's that a difference by about three uh, 550 million or so on the top line in a single quarter for a company like meta and that's causing a 15 percent sell-off probably a good opportunity to get in if you're okay with you know investing in companies owned by mark zuckerberg but still uh you know trading your own risk there the company is performing well not well enough for expectations especially at these lofty valuations the only thing that we could well one of the other takeaways we can get from here is that uh, companies like snap and pinterest are completely fucked snap was reporting earnings later on today if the stock was up after hours i will sell my kidney on the black market that is an absolute promise if it's up on the day please dm me reach out and remind me that i just committed to selling my kidney if the stock actually goes up uh, but that's an action you definitely want to get it on i haven't put in a quote yet so let me go ahead and do that right now but otherwise it's been about 19 minutes so i'll leave you guys on that very high note Happy investing, happy trading. Thanks for tuning in as always. Join the Discord as well. There's another link on the peel tomorrow and we will talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.